everybody. Amen. Going to call the March 7th Committee of the Whole Meeting to order. Roll call, please. Jim. Here. Amber. Here. Daniel. Here. Larry. Here. Mike. Here. Misty. Here. Now I need approval of the agenda, please. I'll make allegiance. a motion. Pledge of Allegiance first. Oh, I'm sorry. I sure enough skipped that. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag I apologize for that. That's really important. Uh, now, uh, I seek approval of the agenda, please. I will make a motion to approve the agenda. I'll second. Roll call. Misty? Yes. Amber? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Larry? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tim? Yes. Okay. Now I seek approval of the February 7th Cal minutes. I make a motion to approve. I'll second. Roll call. Amber? Yes. Tim? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Misty? Yes. Mike? Yes. Larry? Yes. All right. Comments from citizens. If you have any, please come up, state your name, address. Good afternoon. Kenneth Lovett, 18702 Clearwater Road. Um, the management of waste management is still a concern. Just want to bring that back up to y'all. Keep it in front of your uh, front of your brain. Um, the other thing is, I'm wondering if there's uh, someone uh, like a chamber of commerce or something that would uh, take care of, like out here at the red light over by the church, there's rocks, gravel and stuff all over the curb, all up on the concrete. And I'm wondering if there's somebody that does, pays attention to that, you know, as far as uh, keeping it clean. You know, if rocks are on the road, it's going to tear up the pavement. But, you know, especially right here is where I noticed it the other day is just kind of bring y'all's attention to it. We need somebody to look at that, whoever that be, you know, but it just, it caught my attention for whatever reason. Mr. The other Lovett, thing is, we're Mr. Steady. Lovett, yes, ma'am. Would you let? Would you tell me where that is located at again, please? This red light right here, right here at the, at the red light. 412? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there about the church, you know, okay. it's okay. it just where it caught my attention, and then I, as I drove uh, west, you could see more of the gravel that we put on the side. People get off at it, kick it up, and you know, it just adds to the problems in the road. I, my car got hit by a rock was one thing, and I just thought, you know we could do better so uh, the other thing is we bring up a lot of stuff that we talk about here and it don't seem to ever go any further miss brown has brought up you know the bridge down there we don't think it was built right to start with but it's not it's got a washout where they put the new rock the new concrete on the east side and we've talked about that for a while and nothing's been done so you know where does it go from here does somebody with the cow or you know the y'all is what i'm trying to think of what council people who who follows up on that you know the problems that we bring up time and time again you know like waste management like wash out on the bridge and that type of stuff so it's just something i want to bring to you so you can think about it so we don't have to come up here and talk every time and bug you all right thank y'all I can't see. Thank you. <laughs> uh, good afternoon. Mark Calcagney, 12642 Arbor Acres Road. I'm here today because I saw on the agenda that you were going to discuss the amending the noise ordinance. And I'm excited about that and appreciative that you're looking at that. Um, I guess there is a current noise ordinance, but I don't know if it's really been enforced. I kind of look at it like... Uh, you know, kids, you know, you let the kids do one thing, you know, and they, they keep doing it, do it, and you don't really enforce it or you know, use your authority to to stop it. And I think that's kind of what's happened over the years. 
with the NORS ordinance, specifically, you know, on Arbor Acres Road there. You know, when one thing gets ignored, then other things get ignored, like uh, improper use of, you know, landfill traffic. And so that's kind of got out of hand because, you know, that hasn't really been enforced. And then maybe proper covering of trash too. So I know that maybe isn't something here, but you know, we have other entities that are supposed to regulate that. But again, I'm excited about, you know, that you have this on the on the agenda today. And hopefully, you know, that'll be something that you, you know, adhere to and and enforce. And, you know, hopefully maybe that'll be one thing that may trigger other things that, you know, would go, you know, favorably for the city. Well, thank you. Hello, James Dean, 1025 Trailwood Street. Um, I hate to pile on, but the citizens of Hickory Meadows are getting really fed up with waste management and their service. Uh, our Facebook page is just a litany of everybody complaining about either A, their trash didn't get picked up, B, I pay for two cans. I got two cans, and then they came along one day and picked the can up. And then I had to go like four weeks paying for two cans you know, that I didn't have use of. Um, I encouraged all the citizens to come up here tonight and talk. Uh, they didn't, <laughs> Ooh, I guess they're afraid of the microphone. But uh, yeah, the service is, just, it's getting bad. There's no good number. One lady has called them and she's talked to Alabama. She has talked to Arizona. Uh, I called and got a lady in Houston. So it's just, it's, it's just, you know, random where everything goes and i would like if there is a way to bring back waste management to another either cow or uh you know council meeting to let the citizens come and talk to a representative of waste management so that's it thank you anyone else Ms. Brown? Hello, uh, Nina Brown, 1851 South Pinalto Road. Uh, once again, just want to bring up our mainly our streets. We got to have some relief. I was telling James tonight, I didn't know I'd see a day in Tawnytown where I had to wait in line to come out at the post office. Somebody was kind enough and let me out, or I might still be sitting over there. The traffic was backed up on Barrington terribly. We all know we've got the issues, but I hope you keep that in the forefront when we plan and work our problems out. Um, again, I'm the squeaky wheel there at the bridge. I really haven't heard any place where we're going, and it's washing out, and the pavement's starting to wear out on the edges as well um just calling it to attention don't know who to talk to where to go um waste management uh we still have the continuous problem very concerned with the air control the neighborhood pollution uh there's trash there's rocks there's debris in the roads um tracking uh, at one time, they had said something about having a wash, wheel wash, haven't heard anything, seen anything. These trucks seems to be as dirty as they ever have been. Um, you know, just wanted to touch on those few things. And remember, as we grow and progress, please, 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 we need better streets. And we got to maintain what we got. We got to come up with somehow to get that money. Uh, to do all those things, but I appreciate all of your service. Just wanted to call it to your attention, bring it to the forefront. Thank you. Anyone else? Is there anyone online, James? No, sir. Okay. Now, I guess we'll get the department head reports. First, the museum board.
Emily Panato Bashir's reporting for the Tiny Town Museum Board. We met on February 6, 2023, and we have the following updates. Our Tiny Town Heritage Day is tentative for the weekend of May 20th. We last night made a change to the 21st instead of the 20th. So there's a little update on that. Um, the open position, we had spent a lot of time as a board and myself is accepting the position. Um, I resigned from my position yesterday. So the position will be filled by myself in about two weeks. Um, I resigned last night as an acting member of the board. Um, moving forward, I will be giving the reports on behalf of the museum. And board member expansion, we are continuing to grow. Uh, we are looking to add about three additional board members, possibly four now, um, with one additional junior member. If you or anyone else here knows of anyone that would like to volunteer their time to the museum and to the board, that would be amazing. Please let them know. There are forms that will be available online and at all of our events. And as well as volunteers, we last night got our volunteer uh, application updated and we're ready to put it out on the website. So if anyone would like to volunteer without the commitment of being on the board, we would love to have them. And we met last night, uh, March 6 at 6, and we have our next scheduled board meeting on April 6, 2023. Thank you, Emily. Next, we'll have the police department Officer Bowen. All right. So last month there was 535 calls for service. We worked, uh, guys worked 15 accident reports. We ended up serving 88 warrants and we still have 1,240 warrants still active. And then that other number down there is Quite amazing with that. With a one million six hundred twenty-five thousand three hundred twenty-three dollars and fifty cents of outstanding fines and cost, or fines on those warrants. Uh, guys participated in two hundred eleven hours of training, which is we're going to continue that next month. So a bunch more training hours sent off for approval. Uh, total citations one hundred fifty-eight. Uh, those are just ten speeding citations. The other traffic citations were. And we're driving on suspended or anything like that. And the criminal citations, we had 17. And the improper driving in the city ordinance is 31. Uh, guys ended up writing 238 warnings, uh, 43 of which were speeding. And the others, 195, were for the uh, traffic warning. Just miscellaneous warnings. Other than that, I don't have very much more. I have a quick question. Yes. If you can, I don't know if you, yes, how is Mango doing? And has he been out? Has he helped in any capacity with Mango? Well, right now, Tom is doing being, training. Well, Tom is, they're training, but Tom is down. He had surgery on his That's foot, right. on his ankle. So he's, Mango is still going to training. Uh, Tom's going with him. They have another handler, Springdale. One of the Springdale guys is actually helping them continue his training while Tom is down. Okay. Uh, Tom still works on obedience. He's bringing him to work. Um, Tom's helping kind of with criminal CID guys right now. So he's working on obedience with Mango here. He did it earlier. Awesome. So he'll get out and about. We're still working on him. Yeah. So. Tom or Mango? Oh, both. <laughs> We're still working on Tom, especially. But yeah, he's doing he's doing good. He's I've actually watched his 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 work and his obedience is really getting better. So okay. we're continuing to work on it. Awesome. Yes. Sir. Obedience, that was mango not tom both. both i'm i'm working on tom tom's working on mango i'm just trying to keep, <laughs> trying to keep, trying to keep I, I do have a question for you yes you sir. Don't mind. um <clears throat> i believe it was in the month of february there was a head-on collision down in reed valley i just heard about it for the first time from uh from a neighbor um and I, I, I mean, it's probably better for us to talk about it offline, but are you familiar with that? I am not. Okay. I can find out. Though. Yeah, I'd love to know. I'd just love to know a little more about that okay. because some of the stuff that I've heard just doesn't quite sound great. But if we could talk more about that privately, that'd oh, be yeah. wonderful. No, yep. we've had, actually, this last couple of days, we've had a bunch of accidents. So I'm sorry to hear that. It's unfortunate. It just happens yeah. in the morning and the afternoon. Thank you, officer. Appreciate you Thank coming you. in tonight. No problem. Anything else? That's good. 
All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, fire department, Chief Ramsey. Good evening, everyone. Fire department for the month of February 2023. We had 44 calls. Four of those were mutual aid, giving us 40 total calls in the city. That breakdown looks like 28 calls that were EMS related, four fires, four MBAs, one false alarm, and seven service calls. Uh, you may notice that our average response time and on scene time has improved as uh, from January and from December. Uh, our average response time calculated for one minute and four seconds. Our average on scene time was three minutes, 27 seconds, giving us a total of four minutes and 31 seconds with the standard being five minutes. We're improving. We're getting better. We're getting faster, getting out the door and getting to those that need help. Fire department completed 260 training hours in February. Uh, parts of this training included um, uh, mutual aid training with Springdale Fire Department Station 7. It was important to get our A shift, B shift, and C shift partnered with Springdale Station 7 A shift, B shift, and C shift to go over the trucks, go over what equipment each department has. It's the first time that we've partnered with Springdale in a training like this in a long time. So it's good to be able to meet and get to know one another, get to know what crews are going to be working with who, what they're going to be getting when we ask for it. Um, we conducted CPR classes with Rollins Elementary, Tawnytown Police Department, and the Administrative Assistant for the City of Tawnytown. It's important for us to work with businesses and our interagencies, Tawnytown Police Department. Sometimes they're going to get to a scene and realize somebody's in, in danger and they're going to be able to help before we even get there. That's important that they're trained to know CPR. Uh, so we're excited to partner with them in the event that something like this happens. Uh, at least somebody is there that is trained. Um, four of the cadets uh, completed Arkansas wildland out of the five cadets. Three cadets also completed intro and PPE. These are some of the main courses that all new volunteers have to have within their first year. They completed this in two months. So kudos to all the cadets. You guys did a great job. Still got to get through first responders. So they're still not in the clear yet. Still not able to uh, make calls directly from their home yet. They don't have pagers, but we're getting there. Uh, the fact that they're already completing all these classes is a good sign. I tried to include some pictures for you. Them uh, training, it's, it's very important. They train with their gear. They get to know what it's rated for. This is how I put it on. This is when I need to use it. And this is what it can do. And this is what it can't do. So any questions for me? Uh, yes, sir. Wildland may be self-explanatory, but is it just like brush fire, forest fire, fighting? Yes, Arkansas like Forestry actually comes in and they hold a class to discuss uh, forest fires okay. and uh, the means in which we would uh, coordinate to put out a forest fire. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, we're not like California when it comes to those fires, but all it takes is one bad season and a uh, windy day, which uh, will lead me into the uh, smoke from today. Apologize for anybody that was illy affected from that smoke. Uh, that was a fire fire that uh, forestry conducted, a control burn um, just southwest of Fayetteville. So I'm sorry that we got the remnants of all the smoke. Any other questions? It's control. It's control. We had nothing to do with it. Though. <laughs> Thank you for the, the photos. Hey, they help. I like it. Good. They look good. You know, good job with that. Thank you. Still waiting on you to drive a truck, though, Larry. I didn't think you meant it. <laughs> we can work something out. Chief, Any other questions? Chief, yes. was I that false alarm? Do what? Was that, that? Oh, that that one right there? Uh, no, uh, the false alarm on your report. They came to our house because we got struck. Oh, by no, no, lightning, no, but no, it, no, no. We didn't catch on fire, so didn't, we're Didn't good. include that, no. Oh, okay. No, wasn't, wasn't you. It was something else. <laughs> But hey, it, Safe, it was good. it was struck. So listen, I mean, they were, we're there and testing that seconds. We so, knew the post, so but that for. service. Also, um, she, she's probably gonna hate me for doing this. I just want to say a special thank you to Mr. Piazza for blessing my crews with uh dinner and breakfast and, and all the food. They were greatly appreciative of it. And um they weren't so hangry. So thank you <laughs> for that. 
Uh, everybody Please, was in. Thank you. I thought it was, you know, the month of love. Everybody's just happy Valentine's Day. No, it was because they got fed. So thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> just wanted to say thank you for all they're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Next, Mr. Clark, Public Works. Here, let me hit my button again. Okay, uh, this first part, um, street uh, crew is preparing to make stormwater improvement on Brush Creek Road. Uh, actually completed that today. We uh, were planning on having uh, uh, the road shut down for about three days, but uh, because of the inclement weather that's supposed to be coming tomorrow and Thursday, uh, the guys jumped in and, and got the culvert installed and and backfilled we still have to uh, complete the surface uh, we'll concrete that as soon as we can get uh, uh, get concrete probably uh, hopefully uh, friday or early next week uh, at that point um, we'll we'll be able to close half of the road at a time so it'll still be open to traffic we finally received a letter from RDOT regarding the Clint's 412 traffic light. They have completed the environmental study and produced an easement document for a small piece of land that we need to acquire uh, for some additional right of way. Uh, we'll be working with them to try to finish that project up. In the Water and Sewer Department, uh, Monday, February 27th, uh, Garver engineers, along with city staff, met with the contractor of the 412 water line project for pre-construction. Uh, at this time, uh, the Goodwin and Goodwin, uh, the contractor, is planning to begin construction on April 17th. Uh, contract time for this project is approximately one year. You may have heard that there have been some changes at Washington Water Authority. For the most part, these changes are for the better as far as Tawnytown is concerned. When the new Washington County Judge Patrick Deacons took office, he appointed a new board to WWA. The new chairman of the board is Mick Wagner, and Mr. Wagner has already helped us out by changing the plumbing permits and inspections in the city limits. Previously, any plumbing within our city limits that was served by Washington Water had to be permitted and inspected by WWA. We can now sell permits and provide <laughs> inspection to all construction in Tawnytown. Mr. Wagner is also pursuing the process to allow Tawnytown to acquire Washington Water Authority uh, water lines in our city limits and possibly beyond. This is what I meant when I stated most of these changes are for the better. Although we've talked for years about acquiring the service area in our city limits, it will be a very costly endeavor. There will be much more discussion regarding the service area in the near future. I would like to remind you of the upcoming water and sewer projects. Uh, first of all, we have three sewer projects that are included in the bond. Uh, these projects are uh, for South Pinalto, Clint's Road, and Highway 412 West. The additional projects that we need to complete include the Wildcat Creek water line, which was intended to be included in the bond. However, the 412 water line took up all those funds. We do, however, have the materials to construct the project and we'll be bidding the installation soon two small water projects that we will construct with our own crew on South Barrington and Pine Lane. Too small. Anyway, that was a not a good sentence. We will only have to pay for the materials on these. The major project that we need to construct is not currently funded. That is not currently funded is the 1 million gallon storage tank at a cost of approximately $4 million. As I mentioned previously, we will need to finance at least half of the cost of this project. The other major water project, uh, cost of which is unknown at this point, is the Highway 112 widening. With all of these projects slated, it's hard to imagine how we'll be able to fund uh, any acquisition of Washington Water Authority service area. Uh, building permits. Make that a little bigger so I can read it. As you can see, we uh, the commercial it's still lagging a little bit, but uh, as far as the number of permits, 
However, the residential uh, construction has kind of picked up a little bit. We did uh, 31 uh, residential permits in the month of February. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory. Any questions? On the uh, the Clint's light? Yes. Or that land acquisition, is that for a turn lane to go west or is, is it? Actually, it's just for the uh, installation of the uh, pole, the poles and yeah. appurtenances. We, I, did we decide not to not to go with the turn lane to go west at the present time? Currently, yes. <clears throat> Mike, yes. Um, the acquisition of the Washington Water Authority uh, lines. Uh, I'm assuming this includes customers who are already on Washington Water Authority, right? Correct. So. Basically, some of those costs are recouped by getting the customers into the customer base. But we also talking about just the adding additional area and lands that we may need to expand into that will be Tawny Town water in the future. Possibly That's part of that cost. Possibly okay. uh, the talks are very preliminary at this point, um, but we may be able to acquire some of the area north of uh, Tawny Town city limits also. Uh, if we can afford it. Any projection on uh, potential costs? I, right at this point, I don't have any idea what uh, what they're going to be looking at as far as a, a buyout type of cost. Um, but I do, I did get some numbers, um, and it looks like that we could, with the southern and the northern part, acquire an additional about a thousand customers. Well, that's a pretty good number. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have anything for James? Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Now we have the planning department. I'm here. Glad to see you, Mark. <laughs> <clears throat> well, if you look at number one, the coal part of Arkansas, that first section uh, was not heard at the planning commission uh, based on the fact they didn't. Uh, do the right notification of the property owners alone around them. Uh, they did apply for a conditional use permit to allow for an auto wreckage salvage yard within the industrial zoning. And you see those three parcel numbers. They're also requesting a variance from the required 100 foot setback buffer for wrecking and salvage yards. Um, they want that reduced to 25 feet. And then a waiver of the curbing requirements off from the off street parking drives and landscape area. This is actually coming off of 412. Uh, we did review their uh, preliminary large scale development, and that's at 2902 West Henry Dutante Boulevard. These properties are located on 25.1 acres. Gasolina Warehouse, the applicant's requesting approval of preliminary large-scale development at 1044 and 1032 East Henry Detente Boulevard to construct a 13,500 square foot building. New Maven Commercial, an applicant's uh, requesting approval of the preliminary large-scale development on lot three of the Admiral Edition to construct a 7,833 square foot commercial shopping center. We also have an incidental lot split, Donna Baker, requesting a lot split to separate three houses at 1935 Dahl Road. And then finally, uh, Pam Trucking, large scale development. They're adding 155 parking spaces on the south and west side of their corporate offices. And they plan to add um, a lot more. Uh, we're looking at pretty large scale new development for PAM over there in the next three to five years. Anybody else have any questions or anything? Uh, so uh, I, I'm, I'm a not a, it's not a huge deal. I'm a little confused by the top of the page. It says cow agenda, March agenda. This is the planning commission, March agenda. This is the planning, yes. Okay. 
So uh, that meeting is- We had our tech review today. Okay. So these are all that was reviewed. Okay, and that meeting is um, three weeks from today? You will have, uh, well, I mean, what will come to the council will be that conditional use that what you're asking about. No, I, is this going to the planning in three weeks or this already happened? No, this is planning. This is in three what's weeks. What's on here is 28. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's what I'm asking. Could you explain the difference? I, I guess I'm missing it between number one and number two there. I know that, that there's a large scale development, but these are not all part and parcel. Well, originally they were going to rezone it, do the conditional use permit okay. and get the waiver along with the setback but they failed to notify all the property owners within 200 feet. So it wasn't heard. So this is coming back to planning on the 28th of this month, along with their large scale development. Okay. So that first part was supposed to have already happened, but they got it. It's correct. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, your tech reviews, they're on the first Tuesday or the second Tuesday? First. Oh. First Tuesday. Okay. Is there a way that I can be added to the, is yeah. there an email chain that I can get added to, to attend those? Okay. Just to be informed on these. Okay. That'd sure. Great. Is that um, Admiral edition? Is that um, the commercial building behind seven brew? It's to the West of seven brew. Okay. Okay. It's actually going to be facing in, but it's right there by 412. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Next is old business. We're going to discuss section 155.01 fees of the Tiny Town Municipal Code. This would be our esteemed mayor. Okay, as you guys have in front of you, all of the um, codes for several different cities, uh, it looks like Tawny Town is pretty high. Is pretty much uh, above everyone else and what they have for their fees. Um, Mr. Burris, do you have anything that you wanted to mention? Because you, you're the one that asked asked for these, so I was wanting to make sure no. that, that I, I mean, I, I I think there's a whole lot here. We're drinking from a fire hose, uh, so I I mean, I I don't know that. I think this is a part of it, and we talk about it. I don't necessarily have a problem if we cost more than other cities around it, <laughs> in part because you know a place like Bentonville, you know, one thing is one very small part of a very large city. Right. Whereas for us, especially as we're growing, that's, um, you know, each of those is a bigger a bigger part of the whole. Uh, so um, I, I'm thankful that we've got them. Uh, I don't at all feel that I've, um, that I'm um, educated enough. <laughs> to, so to, to so what, we're, what we were originally wanting to do is the reinspection fee we were wanting to uh, to do the reinspection fee and the driveway permits. That's what we're asking, or that's what we're uh, and to and and I, and I to add. Yeah, I I can get behind that in both cases, but but I I think that it um, you know maybe not now, but soon or someday this year that we look further into all of it. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't I, I don't have anything to add. Okay, I mean, so it, whatever so, the council wants to do. So um, the reinspection fee, instead of first and follow up, I believe that we talked about uh, going ahead and um, having just having the first one and then the twenty five dollars, not having a free follow up. Is everyone good with that? I I like what I found with Fayetteville, you know, where the first one's 25 and then if they've got to go out for a second, third and fourth, it kind of doubles and the cap is set at 200. Um, it just helps us kind of control them to not request as many reinspections. Correct. That's true. So um, I like that too. So we want to go ahead and adopt the one for Fayetteville on that one on the reinspection. 
Is uh, that how you I would, would like I to would be in that? favor for that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Do we know about, I don't know if James knows the answer to this or about, how, you know, on average, how many times they have to go out and reinspect? I know we had a report from the last one for mostly history. Yeah, I don't know the number off the top of my head. <clears throat> like I said, I think Roger had provided some last meeting, but yeah, uh, I don't, I don't what know that what is. that is. Well, I think that he had uh, said that there were, it depends on um, which contractor is doing the job. Some of them will he will have to continue to go back and back and back and back. And, and some of them already have it nailed right there yeah. at the beginning. And he only has to make one or two trips back. Mm -hmm. They said it, it really depends on which contractor is going with. I'm not opposed to that, Amy. Yeah, just I think it it helps us out on our end, but it also ensures that you know the builders are doing their due diligence and going back through the house and uh, correcting their mistakes first go around rather than wait till the third or fourth. I believe the complaint, if I remember correctly, was that uh, some companies are using us like a punch list, right? Exactly. That's when they have, he has to keep continuing <clears throat> to go back. Yes. Um, also on the driveway fees, are you guys good with the 75? Is that good with everyone? So I can make sure that I yeah. can get, get that down. Yes. After after doing the research, I, th I think 75 is fair. Okay. Thank you. All right. And as, as Tim stated right now, uh, I'm not the smartest guy in the room. I'll be the first one to profess that. But these numbers just after a while, it, it tells you, you know, not knowing every number or not researching every number, but we, we, uh, we invariably look to be at the top of the list most of the time. And, yeah. and granted we're Tawny town. I agree with that, but, uh, I think we, we ought to tread carefully as far as trying to increase too much more. Just my opinion. Yeah. Across the board, when you look at it, we're pretty high, but I think we're also cl close in right. comparison, right. you know, so I, I like it. It, uh, for the one, you know, we've got a lot of citizens that are concerned with growth and it's gonna, I think that'll help in a way kind of control whether they want to build here in Donnie Down or not. Anyone else? Okay. Now, 8B, discussion of an ordinance to amend and replace chapter 91 noise regulations in its entirety in the Tiny Town Municipal Code. Oh, you read it all for me. Oh, oh. Thank you. <laughs> so um, this is actually, uh, it was adopted, we adopted this from, or hopefully we will adopt this from Salem Springs. Um, we had gotten, several of us had got together and we had pulled the different noise ordinances from Salem, Springdale, different areas. And uh, Salem Springs was the one that was closest fit to our needs in our city. And uh, um, if you will look at B on page one, it says the playing of any sound production equipment or any other kind of musical instrument or loudspeaker device which produces, reproduces, or amplifies, amplifies sound between the hours of 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. or between 11 p.m. and 8 a.m. in commercially zoned areas on Friday and Saturday nights only or within public park at any time. This section will allow businesses like the winery, Red Door, Jose's to still have live music, but uh, have it at an appropriate time. Also, if you will, and this is not, this is nothing changed. This is just like uh, asylums. I'm just bringing these points out. If you will look on page three, E, it says noise from commercial construction activities between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Uh, this only allows for commercial construction during the specified hours and none on Sunday. Um, we do not have a clause for emergency situations. I'm sorry, we do have a clause for emergency situations, and those will be handled uh, as they arise. So we do have that uh, taken care of as well. Mm -hmm. In this, if this gets passed. So do we need a motion to send this to 
Yes, sir. And also the fees. All right. <laughs> we will need a motion to send we the fees. We will need a motion Owen. on the fees and a motion on the noise on ordinance. the noise ordinance. Correct. Yes. Yes. Well, that's well, after the motion, correct? Yes. And I am sorry on the old business on 8A, we discuss the fees, need a motion. We'll back up a little bit here. I'll make a motion to move that to the to the to the city council meeting. I'll second that. Okay, now discussion. Have we not had the discussion? We have already had the discussion without me properly doing it. Yes, but yeah. that's all right. So roll call. Daniel? Yes. Larry? Yes. Tim? Yes. Misty? Yes. Mike? Yes. Amber? Yes. All right. Now <clears throat> we need a motion to amend the ordinance noise rule. So looking for a motion to approve. No, we need to move this to the city council, then approve it at that, that time. Excuse me, you're right. I'll make a motion to move it to the city council. I'll second that. Roll call. Tim? Yes. Amber? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Larry? Yes. Mike? Yes. Misty? Yes. Now to new business. Discussion of an ordinance amending section. I, I thought we were going to discuss that. I'm so sorry. I, I think I missed I missed something there. Too late to talk about that. We just approved it without talking about it. Right? We, we approved to move it to the city council. Okay. I think we still got without, without discussion. Correct. Okay. And I voted for it. That's fine. I, I did have a couple things to talk about, but we can talk about it at city council. Yes. Right. Daddy saying no. I, I think this is the time. We can well, discuss. But we just we just voted on it and passed it to move it. We just passed to move it. We can still yeah. discuss it. I think. Okay. Can we still the discuss it? Allows, I think we can still discuss it. Okay. We allow Please that? do. Okay. Rather now than then. Okay. Does anybody else have anything to say about it? Okay. Um, uh, you know, on these exceptions, I, by the way, I like it. I think it's great. Um, on the exceptions, D and E, I, I wonder, you know, even the domestic power equipment. Till 10 o'clock at night, it just seems a little late. If it's, I mean, if I'm using something at my house, I just wonder if 10 o'clock is too late. And then on um, commercial construction on Saturdays, I'm certainly up before seven, but uh, many people I know like to sleep in on Saturday mornings, and that wouldn't be well facilitated if commercial construction started next door at seven. Um, does anybody have any concerns about that, or am I the only one? I mean, I don't, I don't feel like it's always going to fit every bucket, um, but I feel like it's a good standard set time. Um, most of them aren't doing construction on Saturdays. That's kind of like a exception in a lot of ways. Um, mostly time it's Monday through Friday. And I think seven is a good time. Um, I could see them maybe asking for six in some situations, like when it's really hot in the summer, like my husband likes to mow the lawn. Like I thought of the domestic power equipment mm -hmm. in the summer, you know, it's easier to mow first thing in the morning or late at night. So I could see that, but I, I mean, I don't know that people really take it to 10 o'clock at night. Okay. Well, I, I don't have a problem with the domestic power equipment out where I am, but I just, I wonder if in, in some of the, these HOA neighborhoods, if that's problematic that late, and then, you know, maybe the commercial construction starts at seven thirty or eight. I, I don't know. I, I'm amenable to whatever you guys think. I just wondered if anybody had any concerns. And as Misty said, I don't think I don't think we can establish a law or an ordinance or whatever that that would be a perfect fit. Sure. You're always going to have to make exceptions or things are going to happen. So this is this is just a hope thing, okay. you know, so. To me. Okay. Then. All right. So be it. Thanks. Okay. We've already. Now, we will move to 9A, discussion of an ordinance amending section 51.04, water service rates of chapter 51, water service of the Tawny Town Municipal Code in order to provide for new water rates, declaring and emerging for other purposes. Ms. Angie. <laughs> Who sends it on to Mr. Clark. All right. 
Um, I wasn't here for the February cow, but in my report, um, I, I, I gave you some information uh, relating to this. The uh, Benton Washington Regional Public Water Authority is increasing their rates. They have a three-year plan um, where they're going to increase 10, per, or 10 cents this year, 25 cents uh, in 24, and then another 25 cents in, in 25. Um, originally, they were going to do an increase, which they, they did in January, a 10 cent increase. Um, the original talks, they were going to do something again in July. So I waited to make any changes to ours until we knew what they were going to do. But they've decided now not to do any additional increase until uh, January 24. So what we have here is a 15 cent increase across the board, residential, commercial, industrial, inside and outside city limits. Um, 10 cents, like I say, is, is hardy, already been uh, applied to us by Washington, no, Benton Washington Regional Public Water Authority. Um, if I call them two ton, well, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. Anyway, two ton has already uh, increased the rates to us this year by 10 cents. Um, um, I want to make up for that and then add an additional five cents this year just for maintenance and operations. Um, January 24, uh, I would like to get uh, their 25 cent increase plus 15 cents for maintenance and operations. And that's per thousand gallons. So what you have in front of you, um, the residential at 496, that is uh, what is being proposed. Uh, our current rate is $4.81. Any questions? Um, I just have a comment about this. Um, I looked at the... Uh, uh, cent increase to 15 cents and you, and you take it across the board down the line residential commercial industrial um, basically that results in a 3.1 percent increase on residential 2.9 percent on commercial 2.6 on industrial so it's kind of a disproportionately falling on the uh, residential customer uh, a little bit heavier increase so if you go to a percentage increase would that be a more fair way to increase the price? For example, if you do a 3% across the board, residential goes to 495, commercial 541, industrial 591. So we're talking about marginal increases, but it's a fair application of the increase down the line because everybody gets a percentage versus just a 15 cent raise. Yes, I, I agree with that. And the same the, thing. The issue is, I'm sorry, uh, for me, we have one industrial customer and the commercial, we're at about 200. Uh, so, you know, the bulk of our customers are residential and I could do it as a, as a percentage if, if that's what the council would, uh, would desire. Um, but like I say, it's not going to make much difference in the uh, industrial and commercial. Most of it is in in the residential. Yeah, I just bring it up just to throw it out there for everybody to kind of mull it over and see what they think. I mean, it's I whatever's the. I mean, obviously a fifteen percent or fifteen cent uh, per rate. I mean, it's it's easy to apply to everybody. Sure, a little bit more. But and it doesn't have to be three percent. It could be whatever we decide. I just threw that number out there because I was figuring out the increase, and it was three point one, two point nine, two point six. So I said, "Well, let's just go with three percent and see what numbers we come up with." So yeah, like I said, I, I could certainly do it as a percentage. The way I see it, you know, I, I like the way. You know, Mike's Mike's putting it as a, as a percentage rather than a a cent um, denomination, making it fair for each classification. 
So in 24, we're going to do, let's say, a 4% or a 5% increase? Yes, the total in, in 24 will be $0.40 cents per thousand. So that's probably going to be closer to, to 4%. But we don't have to address that at this right. time. But if you would like, I will I will put together the, the percentage numbers for uh, city council meeting. Well, it, I mean, it's inevitable that we've got to raise the rates, right? I mean, that's right. So it's just how much pain do we want on the front end versus the back end, I guess. Sure. You know, sure. Uh, it's the pick your poison sort of deal. Yeah. And, you know, this is this is happening all over the state, all over the country. Um, you know, water rates, uh, uh, most councils or water boards don't like to raise rates. It's, you know, if, if they want to get reelected. <laughs> but uh, it, it's got to happen, uh, you know, to keep up with the cost of everything. Uh, it's still your cheapest utility. And I think last time I provided you with the, uh, or I meant to provide you with the rates that were in our uh, rate study, and I didn't include those, but I'll be glad to um, bring those to the council meeting so we can uh, talk about that a little bit. Um. <clears throat> I'm going to shock you a little bit. Um, uh, why not raise them more now? Because if we're going up 40 cents in 2024, that's an 8% increase up from the 496. And maybe if we raised it even at 4% now <clears throat> or five, it reduces that a little bit on the back end. So there's not quite as much shell shock on the back end. And it's easier now to understand the inflationary times that we're in. Things are kind of going up all over the place. That's one thought. <clears throat> Pardon me. Another thought is, what if we did a tiered increase that um, went residential is, say, 3% or 4 or whatever, and then commercial is three and a half, industrial is four, or, or something like that. I, I think with an industrial or a commercial customer, it's a different thought process mm -hmm. and should be a different thought process. I don't know. I mean, maybe the rates go in a different direction, but I don't know that those rates should be the same. I think perhaps those rates should be different, uh, but I'm... Um, I'm curious what the council thinks about that. I would love to see what those rate studies showed because if the rate study shows, yeah, we need to go up 7% and we're looking at going up three or 2.9, then we are leaving some money on the table. Uh, I, I do not like increasing taxes. I do not like increasing millages. I do not like increasing water rates, but some things make more sense than others and some things are easier to raise than others. And um, I, I think it might be something worth considering. But I, again, I'd like to hear what the council has to, has to say about that. Well, I might mention that uh, when I started here, it was kind of the opposite. The more water, it was based on usage. The more water you use, the cheaper it was. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a fixed rate for all users. And probably five years ago, we split it up between the residential, commercial, and industrial and applied a, a higher rate to the commercial and, and industrial users. And, and I and I understand that there might be some tiered pricing that after you get to a certain point that we reduce it. However, water still costs us money, right? And if you're using a million gallons or you're using a hundred million gallons, it doesn't reduce our cost. Correct. Right. So I don't necessarily think we should go back to how things were and have it cheaper for somebody who's using more. And it might even go the other way. Um, our industrial uh, customer, for instance, is sending us some pretty nasty water that we've got to deal with. 
Well, it's oh, that's that's clean out, right? That's the other yeah. Thing. The, our the industrial water customer that we have. You're thinking about probably the landfill. I am, yeah. and they are not on our water. Oh, system. that's on the other. They're on I'm, Tony, I'm uh, the Washington other. Water okay. Authority. <clears throat> but from a water standpoint, we still have to provide water, right? We still have to get it from somewhere. We still have to pump it to them. So I don't, I don't know that I that I think that we ought to make it cheaper for anybody else. Um, I don't know that we should necessarily make it more expensive either. But it might be something we're thinking. Is there a, a residential tier? Is there a, a commercial tier? Is there an industrial tier? And and should it be higher than the aforementioned 3.1, 2 2.9, and 2.6%? Does Public Service Commission weigh in on the uh, amount of increase we can do on this at all? Is it not is on that, water rates? Okay. No. Again, I'm not one to, as Tim said, to raise taxes or millage or whatever. But if we go five percent now, we won't have to do the eight percent next, you know, next year. Kind of levelize it a little bit. And don't hit everybody quite so hard. And and water is, of all things, I mean, we are cheaper now because of going with two ton as opposed to being with Springdale water. So it kind of, it we're kind of going back to the level we were before but do you know how the how our rates i'm on washington water so do you know how our rates compare to washington water i've got a spreadsheet on that i thought i had it here but i don't um, i'll be glad to provide that to you after the meeting um, and like I say, I can work up a couple of other options here based on percentage if you want to want me to bring that to the council i was actually gonna yeah i would like to see couple of different options okay it seems like a, a pretty simple thing to talk about but i think there are some moving parts that might be beneficial for us to look at before we make a decision on that i definitely see um i think that was a great point to bring up tim i think um going 15 cents now and then 40 cents next year will be kind of a shell shock even the, i mean it is our cheapest utility that we have but i i think finding a way to maybe balance it out a little bit so it's not such a shell shock um everybody's tight with money everyone's trying to make every penny count so finding ways to make that balance out since we know it's coming and being as proactive as possible i think that's a, a smart move and to your point everyone knows that inflation is here and prices are going up and it would it would make more sense i think to have the big shock now yeah i don't like it any more than anyone else though nope anything else so actually i guess we need to move this because we're we're talking so many different percentages do, do we do we table okay. it to discuss it to the yeah. next meeting and that, once we get information or what what that's what i'm saying do we need to table this to the next meeting so we can to have figure out exactly what rate it is we're gonna to the next cow yeah the next cow i'd make a motion to table until the next cow i'll second that I mean, how long do we have to make any kind of decision on this? I mean, we can absorb, like I said, we've already got the 10% increase from two ton um, as of January. Um, we can absorb that for a couple of more months if we need to. Okay, roll call on the table. Misty? Yes. Amber? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Larry? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tim? Yes. Okay, next, discussion of a resolution to authorize work order number 19T21063 for the Fletcher Avenue Extension Project in the city of Tonytown, Arkansas. That would be our esteemed mayor who's going to hand this off to James Clark once again. Mayor, did you want to say anything before or you just want me to do it? <laughs> okay. Um, so with the talk of the, I believe it's called Skybrook subdivision and uh, the rezoning of that, um, we are looking at the extension of Fletcher Avenue from Barrington to Clint's Road. Um, one of the things that we need to know uh, going in is, you know, how much is that 
developer going to be required to pay for. Um, and it's a little little weird on this one because it starts off on, on Clint's on the west end. The entire Fletcher Road is on the uh, Skybrook property, and then it kind of angles across. So it, there's going to be some um, some calculations that have to be done there in order to give them an actual uh, amount of what they're going to have to spend on the road. Um, I've spoken with Garver a couple of times, and and one of the things that uh, they gave us when they provided the concept plan was a square or not a square foot, but linear foot price. And what they're saying is uh, about fourteen hundred dollars a linear foot. Um, I believe the uh, area or the length of Skybrook property from west to east is about 2,000 feet. And so I I think it's somewhere close to that. Maybe it was 1,600. Anyway, it, I know what it came up to. A uh, million, 800,000. Uh, that would be their requirement to pay on that, that road. Um, but without having a plan and, and knowing, uh, you know, what we need to do going forward, uh, we need to go ahead and have Garver um, generate the plans for us. Uh, and uh, this is the work order, uh, what they call it, to, uh, to start on the design of that, that road. Um, normally, we don't bring engineering projects to the council um, since we already have a contract with Garver. Um, we could have just uh, approved them to go ahead and 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 do the design work, but uh, because this one uh, is kind of controversial on, on you know whether we want to uh, assist the developers uh, in this endeavor, uh, we decided to uh, bring it to the council just to let you know that you know when we ask them to design a project, it's it's not free. Um, and, and in this case, it's $141,000 just to do the design work. Um, but if we're going to proceed with that road project, we've got to have the we've got to have the plans. Any questions on that? So I you said uh, <laughs> the entire right of way uh, for Fletcher from Clint's to the end of Skybrook is in what Skybrook has purchased, is it's, that right? It starts off on the west side, the entire road is on their property. But then as it comes across, it kind of angles up. Right. So it, it gets to where it's splitting the property by the end of, of their uh, east property line. No, 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 you're fine. Because we're going to have probably within the next two months, another subdivision come before uh, the planning and probably council, uh, the 38 acres of the old uh, Franco property that has sold a couple of times, and uh, now they're ready to develop that. But uh, in, in speaking with them, they're going to be requesting R4 zoning. Um, I asked, told them, good luck. I mean, you're <laughs> certainly welcome to, to uh, try to get that. But uh, anyway, uh, the other part or the other half of this road is is going to be included in that project or the other quarter actually so we're going to have some on the west side that we're going to have to to pay for and then we're going to have some on the east side on the south that we'll have to to pay for okay for, uh now i have a couple of questions or comments or whatever the case may be uh one hundred forty-one thousand is 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 that pretty typical? That seems like a lot of money to me. I I look through what they're billing for, and it's like, really, it sounds like they put every person they have it out there on on this project. You know, just let me stick an hour or two on here, and and uh, are we dedicated to Garver, or, or do we need to put do we need to research and maybe get two or three different engineering firms? And uh, um, you know, we we could get other. Um options most engineers work off of a um, state approved number 
um, or percentage. And that's what this is, is a percentage of the, of the cost. I think this is about 5%. And, you know, that's kind of how they break it down. You know, design and engineering, 5%, you know, construction observation, different aspects of the of the project are at a certain percentage and um i would like I say we could we could check it out but i would i would bet you that just about any engineering firm is going to be uh, roughly the same amount for the design work i think i was just a little shocked as i say i guess i'm naive uh, okay are there any other questions for james Mr. Burris? Yeah, thank you. Uh, if it's true that it's it's roughly the same cost no matter who we work with, then then why work with Garver? Like what's what's what do they bring to the table versus anybody else that where we say, hey, that's that's um uh, the the folks for us. When we went out, uh gosh, it's probably been four or five years now uh for statements of qualification, they had at, at the time. Uh, we were doing the the big water projects. They had the most uh, engineers and the most uh, uh, resources in this area. Um, they can do just about any kind of project. Um, some of the other firms are more dedicated to water and sewer. Some are more dedicated towards transportation. Uh, we felt like Garver can do it all. And that was the reason they were chosen. But that was four or five years ago. It might it might be kind of fun to look at that again. Um, you know, I um, I I know we need roads. Uh, Ms. Brown mentioned it earlier, and and uh, you know you don't have to drive very far to to realize it, right? All all of us, uh, you can go to the post office and, and realize that that's a problem, can't you? Um, but I feel a little bit like we may be putting this particular cart before the horse, and maybe I'm wrong. Um, maybe I just don't, uh, I, I'm a little confused on what's going on down there. Um, but, um, from some of the things that I've heard, uh, I, I just, I, I wasn't certain that that's where we are on this yet. Um, but if that is the going rate, if Garber is, uh, you know, our, our firm and, and, and we feel comfortable working with them. And if we have to go down that path and, 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 and then, you know, why not, I guess, but uh, there might be some things worth looking into. I agree. I have one more question. Let's, okay, so right now it's my understanding that that they are wanting to go to R4. Is that correct? Yes. And if they don't, Who? and we, okay, uh, if they, if we do not, allow them to go R4 and that stays R3 and we have we have Garver do this and they back out is this something that's that's going to be is this something that that we're going to do regardless I mean in my opinion yes uh, Mark and I have been working on the, uh, you know, he's been doing the comp plan and, and we've been working on the master street plan. And we feel like that this connection, uh, uh, from Barrington to Clint's is one of the, uh, most important Quarters, projects yeah. we can do right now. Okay. And, and yeah. for, for getting, you know, all of those, uh, kids in uh you know hickory meadows right. and, and south point uh a, a safe trip to school um uh, keeping some of that traffic off of 412 uh having the sidewalks where they could you know walk to school if they needed to so but what i'm asking is this this road pretty much is going to be surveyed and done this way regardless of whether tristar or whatever Start, yes. Start. Okay. Yeah. They don't. They don't have any say in the construction of it. Uh, you know, as far as where it goes. And, okay. And the, okay. This would need to be done regardless. Yes. Okay. No further questions. <laughs> My question on it is, you know, you said it jogs more onto TriStar's land on the west side, and as we go east, it kind of. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why is that? Why is it not half on TriStar and half on 
the house there on the north side, um, they had to kind of split that area in there because that the house and and barn, barn like is, is, it, yeah, yeah. Is, you know pretty close to the um, property line. So when that when that barn was constructed, were there setbacks and were they followed? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. The other reason is the house across the street. This one? Yes. We don't want the, we want it to continue going. Yes. Uh, the master street plan shows uh, Fletcher to go all the way to. Um, so we've made that adjustment to kind of. Right. Come on. Okay. And irregardless to whether TriStar commits to constructing R3, we're going to come through with this road. Yes. Okay. And then I'm also seeing, are we connecting to the Tuscan Sun cul-de-sac? Uh, the original plan was to connect to it. Um, obviously, uh, everyone in that subdivision was against that. We don't have to connect there. I mean, from a fire standpoint, I think it would make sense to have that connection. Well, I thought so too, but entrances and exits. But the, I'm not sure exactly how many lots are in there, but our, the current Counted code. 18. 18. I drove through there the other day. 18. Yeah. The current code says that, you know, you can have up to 30 lots with just one Without. ingress, egress. Yeah. I can certainly can see their concern about connecting that because what you would have is people shooting off through the neighborhood to maybe avoid some traffic from school or, um, you know, how Barrington backs up north and south sure. at, at prime time and people would cut through that neighborhood to hit Fletcher. So that's a valid, legitimate concern that those people have um, for connecting Fletcher to that uh, cul-de-sac area. Yeah. Yeah, and I agree. Like I said, we we certainly don't have to make that connection. One of the things we did on in my subdivision is we've got a we had a cutout kind of like that. We had people coming off of Barrington using our subdivision to get to Liberty um, because that traffic backs up. And uh, what we did is put in some speed bumps, and that that dramatically reduced the traffic that came through there. So that's something. That's a thought for. And I, I don't, I'm not too sure if we paid for that, if that was a city that paid for those, those speed bumps. The POA paid for those. Okay. We installed them. Okay. Okay. I guess any further discussion? I guess I need a motion. <laughs> Mo Mo motion to move it to council, yes. I'll make a motion that we move it to council. I'll second. Now, I guess we have discussion one more time. <laughs> uh, I, I certainly don't mind moving it to council. Um, and I and I don't even mind approving it if, if the council is so inclined to do so. Uh, however, I do think it might be a good time to look at some of those other things. To If it's been four or five years since we... Uh, put out for qualifications on various firms. I mean, that could change in five years. That might be something worth looking at. Um, and um, if it if it doesn't kick this can down the road too far, you know, then it might be something worth worth considering. Um, but that's <clears throat> that's my only thought. I mean, I, I we we know we need it. We know it has to happen at some point in time, um, and we know that it has to start with a step. Okay. So Anything if, else? if, um, to Tim's point, if, um, if, you know, if we're pushing this to council for a vote, could, you know, do we have enough time to possibly get a quote from another comparable engineering firm? Possibly. I mean, can you think of a comparable engineering firm off the top of your head that? And yeah, there's a couple of firms here, uh, in Northwest Arkansas that, uh, would be able to handle that. I think the mayor has something to say here. I definitely agree with uh, Amber and Tim. 
I think that we should look into finding a, another, another bid to see if, I mean, this is a lot of money. Um, and also, just to reiterate, um, Mr. Clark, we have to have this plan, correct, in order to get the road even thought about. Yes. Thank you. And the one thing I was going to say, and I agree that, you know, I was the one that initially brought it up, but, but if James is pretty convinced that, that this is going to be a fee, I think perhaps what we could do on, you know, is go ahead and pass this one and then do a little research as far as, as what other engineering firms might charge us. So, you know, in the future. The only problem with that is when you ask for statements of qualification, you can't ask for fees. Ah. Your your decision has to be based on the most qualified engineer. Qualified. So we can't just get a, a bid, like just like what we're looking at and you know, right here. We yeah, we can we can get a bid, but if we want to use that engineer uh, more than once, um, we would have to, uh, you know, put out for statements of qualification again and then uh, select a different firm. And, and, and what's I was going to say what's bad, but it's it, I guess it's not good or bad, but when you're asking for the most qualified engineer one that you've been working with for the last five years is going to be the most qualified. You know, they have all of our records, all of our surveys, all of our plans that, uh, that they put together. But have one, uh, two weeks seems like a pretty tight timeline for, to come up with another bid to put this before council to vote on. Um, I mean, honestly, would you prefer to have a little more time to, look into obtaining yeah, if, other if, bids if we're talking about changing engineering firms then yeah it's going to take i don't i don't know that that's the discussion necessarily i think it's talk, just specifically talking about uh money uh and getting bids for this design concept right i don't think we're talking about changing engineering firms but if that i mean if i didn't take that as the discussion that well, we're I, having. that's kind of not to interrupt but that's kind of what i was saying i i thought that Perhaps we were being uh, maybe taken advantage of, but but if Mr. Clark, and there again, I'm I'm not I'm not the smart one in the room, but if Mr. Clark says that Garver is as good as it's going to get, and the price is about as good as it's going to get, then then I guess I started a discussion that I probably shouldn't have. So. Well, I don't even know that that's what you're saying. You know, you they have our records. We've been working with them for years. Uh, you know. It doesn't mean that they're going to give us an incredible deal because there's any loyalty there, but correct. We mean there may be just as good of an engineering firm that we've never used before that could be twenty thousand less, thirty thousand less that we just don't know because we don't, you know. I'm afraid what we might get though is a lower price yeah. for uh, from another firm trying to get their foot in the door. Right. Yeah, cheaper bids but, not necessarily going to mean you're going to get the best. Right. right. But you don't have to necessarily, you know. Use them again, right? True. Well, I um, I understand we've worked with Garber for many, many years. I, I just think it might be a good business practice just to ask other folks for qualifications. Maybe not on this project, but I don't, I don't think there's any harm in that, as, uh, especially for something that's that's so so much. Um, I don't want to stop everything in its tracks, most certainly, um, but. Um, I don't know that we've heard from everybody yet either. It'd be interesting to hear what everybody has to say. Can I add one more thing? We have a, uh, I assume the same thing was done for the, the Fletcher extension that was most recently completed. That's correct. So do we have a comparator bid uh, and a similar, uh, 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 what, what do you call this? The work the, order that was drawn up by whomever did it i assume it was yes, probably Garver. yeah we would so have that do we have that information available that we can look at and compare okay what did you charge us three years ago versus whatever it was three years ago versus today yeah i can get that information okay i think that'd be good to look at too mm -hmm. if you did that you just have to keep in mind of the inflation and the you <laughs> yeah. know 
And I know some of you are shocked at the price, but I, you know, I, we've paid them a lot of money over the last uh, few years. And uh, I hate to say it is what it is, but like I said, I mean, engineering costs are kind of, kind of fixed. Um, I wish we had an engineer here to speak to that, but uh, um, you should see about the same about the same cost from all firms. So I I brought on a discussion that's fairly well moved in it, uh, and I apologize. <laughs> I know. Well, I'll I'll be glad to try to get some information from another firm or two, and uh, we will uh, compare some of our past uh, projects and uh, go from there yeah it's it, it's not that i'm shocked by the price i just want to be a good well i mean it's a big number but that's not the thing it, I, I want to be a good steward and i think it it makes good business sense from time to time just to make sure that we're working with the most qualified folks if it's garver fantastic right um i mean i'll use mark ramsey as an example when we were looking for a chief we didn't just say mark's our chief right he ended up being our chief he was the best pick but it's good to know when we're looking at other qualifications from other folks that he was the guy. Uh, so if if Garver comes out on top, great. If Garver doesn't, great. Um, you know, we we need to be good stewards. And the only other thing is we always want to make sure when we're spending money that we've budgeted for it. Um, so I'm guessing this has a carve out in this year's budget somewhere. This hundred and forty one thousand. No, it, it it was not budgeted for. Okay. This is something that it makes my heart sad, James. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, this is something that would uh, be funded from the street department, which uh, at the end of the year, you might have to reimburse the street department from the general um, to make it balance. You can, I, I, I agree with you, Tim. I think that we should, you know, for the city, be good stewards of that money and take a look at, you know, another something to compare it to whether it's our past or it's getting another one from a different firm and seeing what uh what they're at in confirming this before we take it to a vote so i think we should table this give james some time and uh you want to table push, it or move it to the next cow i would table, table it for the until the next cow so do we need to make an amendment because we did no you can just that move from to the table I'm sorry. Yeah. So Daniel's made a motion to table. We need a second or I'll oh. second. All right. Roll call, please. Amber? Yes. Jim? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Misty? Yes. Mike? Yes. Larry? Yes. Okay. Item C discussion of a resolution waiving competitive bidding and authorizing the purchase of one 2022 Ford F. 540 regular XL 4x4 7.3 liter truck and snow dog TE 90 snow plow with related equipment from Grand Trucking Equipment Company LLC for the city of Tinydown, Arkansas. James, please. <laughs> There's a typo in that. Uh, it's a F450. Well, I wondered about 540, that. 540, but anyway. Read it as printed. This is in the budget. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually budgeted. Uh, quite a bit more for this uh, vehicle, um, not knowing what the availability was going to be and and looking at uh, some of these online um, prices. Um, this is the truck that we're talking about. Um, and you can buy this truck. Uh, I found several, yeah, several uh, ads anywhere from about 73,000 just for the truck, all the way up to, you know, here's one for 96,000. I actually budgeted 110, um, thinking that I would be able to get one for uh, around 80 and and then still be able to add the snow plow. Um, and this, because it is a four wheel drive, the plan is to use this as a uh, plow truck. Um, and of course, none of the mounting equipment that we have on our existing truck will will fit on this one. Um, we're adding adding that to it. Um, where's the quote? That's not it. 
How far back here am I? <laughs> there, there it is. Go. Um, so what they're, uh, what they're basically selling us the truck for is about 51,000, 51, six, uh, they are going to install the dump body, which doesn't come with the truck. Um, and then the, uh, the snow plow and, uh, the tarp for a total of $80,089. Are there any questions about it? I'm actually impressed. I mean, this kind of equipment can be quite pricey and I, I think you did a great job. Thank you. So is the the snow plow, and I, I think I know the answer for assets. It will not be on there all the time. It'll be something that you can take off and store in the-, in the That's correct. Or whatever. It, the mount will stay on the truck, but the, okay. the plow can be taken off, yes. And it'll just be a dump bed? It'll be a dump truck. All right, any more questions from anybody? No, I do have a comment, if I may. Please do. Um, after speaking with uh, Mr. Ward and Mr. Scott Ardemani about uh, trucks and snow plows, I know that the one we have now is it, we are in in need of one for next year. Um, and I think that since this is such a great deal, I, I think we should jump on it. That that's just my my opinion. Well, yeah, as much as you made my heart hurt last time, James, I, I'm shedding tears of joy. No oh, good. <laughs> Yeah, if anyone has any opposition to it, I know you can't vote on it tonight, but I, I really need to let the guy know before this gets away um, if there's any no opposition, I will let them know tomorrow that uh, we are interested interested, and will probably uh, approve the purchase on the, on the 21st. Need a motion? Well, I'll make a motion that we. I'll second that, whatever you say. Yes. And now I guess we're going to discuss again. <laughs> Any further discussion? How many plows do we have in our fleet as of right now? We've got one uh, dump truck plow, and we've got one that's on a, uh, a one-ton truck. Okay. And... Uh, it, if we purchase this truck, we will probably take the one off of the one ton truck. This will be a um, much heavier duty uh, vehicle to put the, the gravel spreader on and uh, um, not be tearing up our one ton that we use every day. Yeah. Further discussion. It's below budget. Did, did he mention that? Yeah, uh, thirty thousand. <laughs> money back then. Thirty thousand. Yeah, I'm looking for a motion. Glad you noticed that. I think we, we got a motion. A motion. Second. Okay, roll call. We got a person. Is Mike. Yes. Tim. Yes. Larry. Yes. Amber. Yes. Daniel. Yes. Misty. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, item nine D. Discussion of a resolution to assign positions for the appointed members of the Tiny Town Planning Commission. Per Tim, and Tim has said that he is perfectly satisfied, and this needs to move on down the road. Yeah, I, I don't know why my name got on there, but within thirty seconds of the last meeting, I was I was totally fine. So, yeah, I got nothing to, nothing to add. But thank you. <clears throat> All right. So this so this resolution is going to be Nick's aid. Yes. Okay. What? Which ones? That there was a resolution to to assign it like this, make this, but it's 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 all well. I mean, it, it, I, I'm not opposed to having the resolution, but I, I I'm I, I see what you're doing and understand it. What it's next? Oh, no, I was just going to say that there was already one in place, and we have position yeah. one, two, and yeah, um, I I did not. I apologize. I did not explain it well whenever I was trying to explain it to Mr. Burrows, but he came to my office and I did show him exactly what I was talking about. And I provided each of you with a sheet to show you how I um, determined in full color, in full color, how I was determining uh, what seat was vacant and what was not. So, and that started in 2016. I have the first part with me, but um, I did, I just, I didn't want to waste paper. So I only printed the last part. Yeah. So if we don't make a motion that just goes away. All right, then I would like to not make a motion. Uh, 
Okay. 9E, discussion of quotes for purchasing of water project material. Mayor James. Mayor, you're going to take this one. Mayor James. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, as I mentioned in my report, we've got a couple of small water extension, water line extension projects that I would like to do in-house. Uh, the materials for those two extension, one of them is about 1,500 feet, the other is about 1,000 feet. I think uh, we can accomplish that with our crews. Um, and this is the material that we will need to uh, complete that project. I may have already said that. Anyway, so I got you some uh, quotes on the materials. Uh, Ferguson um, got one from Corn Main and one for Southern Pipe. And for full disclosure, I received one more right before the meeting started. So um, Fort Smith Wind Water turned in a, a quote of 106,442.84. Um, that uh, was not the low quote. The low quote came from Corn, Maine at $102,295.98. Have we used all these before? Are these all the normal? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and the reason that Corn Main had the low bid is they've actually got the material in stock, oh, which is very it. rare these days to have pipe and yeah. uh, fittings in stock. Um, I, I think it was ordered for uh, another job and uh, that job fell through. So they've got it in their yard in Tawny Town. Need a motion? Yes, sir. Send this to a vote yeah, we're going to make a motion to to uh, to approve, I guess, to, to send it. To move it to council. Move I'll to, make that motion. Move to city council. I'll second. Okay, discussion. So, I mean, they're all the exact same product across the board, correct? There's not a better quality one or... No, ma'am. That's... So, uh, it's just their difference in pricing. Yes. Uh, there was a couple of... Uh, companies that bid a different brand of fire hydrant but other than that everything should be exactly the same and that some of them will have to be ordered is that what i'm understanding um corn main uh i i spoke with them and uh, after i got all the quotes and they said they had 99 percent of the materials in stock and what they don't have in stock, we've probably gotten stock with all of the material we bought for the water and sewer uh, projects, bond projects. And I, this should not be a determining factor, but they are here in Tawny Town, and, and I like that. So. That's correct. I like that too. But it should be. Yeah, all that, or not all of it, but that sales tax of almost $10,000, we'll get, a, get our share of that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Roll call. Uh, wait, oh, wait, I'm wait, sorry. sorry, Tim. So my only concern is that we have some stuff, some pipes we bought that, Correct. that have been sitting out in the weather for a while. Correct. Right. So which does not hurt that the the pipe. Okay. okay. Well, that's good to know. Uh, but when does when does all this get in the ground? Um, if we get approval on this at the council meeting, we're going to start within a week of putting this in the ground. Okay. Um, now, the materials that we have uh, uh, from the big purchase we made last year for the bond projects, as I mentioned, the one project, the 18-inch water line, took all of our water money and then some. We're going to have to add about $800,000 to complete just that project. Um, we've got another... Uh, water line that we have the materials for that we've ordered the materials for and that's wildcat creek water line we have got to replace that line there's been breaks on that line almost weekly um, and it's an old two inch water line three inch water line that uh, is out in the road 
it wasn't installed in an easement along the road. It's actually in the road and uh, it was not installed correctly. Uh, there's no bedding in the pipe. So rocks are cutting into it. The traffic is causing uh, you know, the, the pipe to move. We have got to do something with that, with that pipe or that road. And uh, we are, uh, Garver is putting out for bids right now on that. Hopefully we can afford to do it out of our reserve funds, but uh, we'll know once we, once we get bids, uh, if all the bids come in too high, but <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do. that has nothing to do with this. No, right? no, okay. that has nothing to do okay, with Okay, so this. regarding this, and by the way, I mean, that's just like the saddest story. So don't tell me sad stories before bedtime <laughs> of nightmares. $800,000, that's that's nightmarish. But uh, this $102,000, i am i am guessing there's a carve out in this year's budget for this, that this has been budgeted for. No. Oh, James. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I originally thought we were going to be able to do this with our bond money. Um, and uh, we do have, though, some reserve funds that, uh, well, we've got three, basically three different reserve funds. One is like a depreciation fund. The other is a new construction fund. And then we've also got, I hate to say it, but we've got enough money in our operating budget right now, or in our uh, operating fund right now to to do it. I mean, I don't want you to think I got too much money, but. Uh, uh, well, it's it's March 7th. Right. So, so the fact right. that you've got money there, that makes me really happy. <laughs> the fact that that we we just uh, approved a budget and it's March 7th and we didn't have this approved, that part makes me unhappy. But if, if we can find a, a, a way and a place to do it, I mean, we know that we need it. Uh, but I don't want to get in the habit of buying stuff that we need when we don't have the money to do it. Sure. And so talks about, you know, these bonds. I, I recollect a conversation that we had that we didn't apply for a certain bond because we had gotten it the previous year. But I've a grant. Yes. A grant. That's correct. Um, we didn't apply for it because we had gotten it the previous year. But out of the cities that are growing, I think we're we're growing rapidly to where I think if we would apply for that grant and we explained that, you know, the growth in our area is just astronomical, um, that perhaps we could get that grant, you know, back to back each year to help carve this out into our budget. And Yeah. Uh, what you're talking about was the state aid street, uh, uh, fund, and that is administered by the highway department and, Honestly, they don't care how fast we're growing. They've got to spread that money all around the state equally. Or yeah, okay. But I, 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 I think anything would help if we put a, you know, we put it out there. They don't. What the worst thing they can sure. say is no. If, sure. But if we don't even put in, put our name in the hat, then we're just automatically taking a no without even trying. Right. Well, and the other big thing that we, I thought we were going to qualify for was some of the ARPA money. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't get a dime of that. Any further discussion? Roll call. Misty? Yes. Amber? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Larry? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tim? Yes, with the caveat that it comes out of the operational fund. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, comments from our council. Daniel. I'm up first. Well, again, I want to thank everybody for coming out here tonight. I want to thank um, our Captain Bowen for coming up here and giving us our rundown on the police department. Um, I hope that uh, Mango's handler uh, is, you know, recovering uh, at a at a good a good pace. Um, thank you, Chief Ramsey, for your report. Thank you, James, and Public Works. Misty, I want to thank you for your hospitality to the fire department, and I want to thank Chief for bringing that up so that you know, you know, you, most of us don't like to toot our own horn, but when 
when it's needed, it's needed. And so I thank Mark for bringing that up to us. I want to also thank Mark and the planning department and all the work you do. Um, that's about it. Misty. So I just want to say thank you to the public works and the, the police and the fire. Um, saw a pretty bad accident on 412 and, and 112. I pulled up right after it happened the other day and we were quick to respond and it didn't look like anyone was hurt, but I'm not a paramedic by any means. So, but um, it's a comfort knowing that we have those safety measures in place and that there's a quick response. So thank you for that. Um, we are looking for volunteers for our event in September 16th for the car show. There's a Facebook page out there now. Um, we're gonna start um, taking applications for vendors, um, merchandise and food. So if you know anyone, please send them my way. Um, it's through my email, I'm taking those. And then also there's a discount if you register your cars in advance, you get $5 off the registration fee. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we'll start doing signups for the Bochi tournament probably in this summer because um, they know the guys that play that they those teams, they're very competitive and they know pretty much they're going to do it. So we're going to do that probably starting this summer. Um, and then I just encourage everyone to earmark May 21st, um, the Tawny Town Heritage Days. We have a great turnout. There's usually free food and a live music and we just get together and the museum will be open and you'll get to just learn more about the heritage of the town that we're helping to support. So thank you. Amber. I just wanna say happy birthday to Chief Jennison. I heard he had a little celebration today, maybe some taco soup. Okay, that was awesome. Um, and also I know I mentioned this, but really I guess when the big storm happened a couple of weeks ago, our house did get a little strike fried our printer, but also another house did too, but really they were so fast to respond. I know I'm right there, but I made a call and they were there and Chief Jennison was knocking on my door in, you know, 30 seconds, which was a surprise. I wasn't expecting to see him and then Mark and them, they just responded really quickly. And I know that that is the kind of service that our, our, all of our residents receive. So I just appreciate, I appreciate our, uh, I appreciate our fire and police tremendously. So anyway, that's it. Mike. Uh, yes, I just have a few. Thanks again for everybody coming out here. Um, I've heard your uh, comments about waste management, and I, and I do think, and I would like, because I've had my dealings with them myself, where you try to call and you get bounced around, you get phone calls answered in Arizona, New Mexico, wherever. It would be nice to have a local number, especially since they're in our backyard, where they would actually answer the phone here. Uh, James, your point about uh, trash not being picked up, I had a problem with that too. Uh, my bill got sent to the wrong place. So you might check with your neighbors and see if, uh, you know, cause they may be assuming that they're not paying their bills, but the bills may be going to the wrong place or just not being delivered properly. That's something that they should correct, but you know how that is. So, and then um, I think the light at Barrington uh, and 412 is high priority on the list. I know everybody's had to deal with the issue. So I think that's being addressed. I know the wheels of government sometimes move a little bit slower than everybody wants them to, but we'll get that taken care of, I know. So, and again, congratulations to police fire. Great uh, response times. I appreciate that, guys. Uh, you guys have a thankless job. I know how it is. It's... Uh, uh, it's tough being out there on the front line. So appreciate it, guys. Thanks for all you do. Yeah. Well, first off, I'm sure that Chief Jennison's watching. So happy <laughs> birthday, Chief. <laughs> uh, to comment on uh, Mr. Lovett and Mr. Calcagney, Mr. Dean, Ms. Brown uh, in particular, I appreciate you bringing up those things because several of those things I thought were either in the process of being dealt with or had been dealt with. So those are the sorts of things that we need to circle back on. So thank you. Uh, and and if you need to be the squeaky wheel, keep on squeaking. Squeaky wheel gets the grease. So thank you for that. I'm sorry that you have to keep squeaking. Um, regarding... Um, 
our, our new part-time uh, staffer over at the museum, Emily. Uh, congratulations, Ms. Benalto Shears, and thank you, Ms. Shears, and thank you for being here to uh, uh, to deliver the report tonight. Uh, welcome. It's, it's so nice to have you and to know that you'll be here every uh, every month reporting. Uh, she's not watching either, but if she ever goes back, she'll see that. Uh, and then uh, regarding waste management, you know, um, uh, obviously there. Um, um, they're, they're, they're not the most liked um, company around here in town. And I, I think my big concern is that they don't do much to change that. And I would wish that if they're watching, I would wish that they would care a little more about the city that's hosting their landfill, that they would try to make things better than they do. Um, Again, personally, we've been paying for two cans and we haven't gotten two cans until uh, our recycle can showed up one day and then out of the blue, a uh, a second can did finally show up. They've been charging me for something that I haven't been getting. And, uh, and then uh, there will be weeks where they just don't pick up. And it's not because of snow. It's because they just don't pick up. So I'm not entirely sure, sure what that's all about. I think part of it is that... Um, they've they've gotten anything they've ever wanted and they continue to get anything they ever want and uh, perhaps um there's no teeth and maybe there won't be any teeth for the next five years or so i don't know but um i think what we need to do is uh is bring jamie vernon in and um maybe to a cow meeting or some other meeting if, if you'll allow that mayor russell um the chairman that uh, we would have an opportunity to talk to him and maybe even a meeting where citizens would have an opportunity to engage with them directly. I know we used to have um, monthly meetings with the landfill that just sort of went away. Um, they didn't. Go ahead. No, sir. Uh, waste management chose to not let us um, have the meetings any longer. Right. Yeah. They went away. It was their choice. I understand. Right. Well, it was when they hired their publicity firm. Uh, so um, I think as a city, uh, we probably need to demand a little more. And I think as citizens, uh, you deserve a lot more than than you're getting. Um, and, and not just from waste management. But um, thank you to those of you that are on uh, the, the council. It is wonderful to have the opportunity to work with people that... Um, uh, that are um, that are here. I mean, I, I've enjoyed uh, all the councils I've had an opportunity to work with and all the council members, but uh, this is a really uh, special group and I'm really excited about the three new members. I'm really excited about the two existing members. I'm not, I'm less excited about myself, but um, it, it's been great. So thank you so much uh, for all of that. Yeah. All right. I just have just a little bit, and Miss Brown, squeaking. I, I, I may have dreamed this, but I, I, I think I heard talk of somebody repairing that bridge or working at it to get it changed, the course changed or the placement of the bridge. I could have dreamed that. You know, I have, I have big dreams. <laughs> it's so long it's going to be a that there's been anybody looking at it doing anything. There again, I might be dreaming. <laughs> the only thing that I know of that is uh, currently going on is the stormwater study uh, for the entire city. And of course, that area will definitely be included. Dreaming again. Uh, it, it, waste management uh, consistently, you know, we have issues with them. And, and I, I had written down here, uh, perhaps we can get Jamie Vernon back, maybe not more of an informal thing to where he doesn't feel like he's, you know, going to be pressured, sit down and discuss our issues again. I don't know if it'll do a bit of good, but uh, obviously we need to get something. And uh, congratulations to Emily, and I'll turn it on over to the mayor. Please bear with me. I have quite a bit tonight. <laughs> um, 
The community yard sale has been set for May 5th and 6th. Please check the website and social media pages for further information. There are flyers on the back table. The Tiny Town Farmers Market will begin May 6th and run through the end of September. We have had uh, several vendors already sign up. Uh, you can you can either sign up online, come into the come into City Hall and ask for Leslie. Any questions, you can call and ask for Leslie. Uh, also, there's flyers on the back table about that as well. We have received several calls regarding spring cleanup. Since waste management offers bulk pickup and two vouchers to each citizen, uh, we did not think that was necessary. However, we may need to rethink that. Um, there will be a public hearing on March 21st. Prior to the city council meeting, this public meeting will inclu include an appeal for rezoning at the 630 Clink Road. There will be a sales tax allocation workshop session on Monday, March 27th at 6 p.m. here at City Hall. Council, this is your last chance to sign up for the summer conference in Little Rock. Uh, it's going to be June 14th through 16th. Registration will be opening soon, and we want to make sure that we get uh, really good spots. So please email Leslie before the end of business day uh, Friday to let her know if you will be able to attend. You can attend in person or virtual. Uh, also, Leslie had sent out a text message to all of the council about the cow not being able to be on June 6th. That has been canceled. So we will be, uh, we will not have to change the date. It will be on June the 6th. I'd like to thank the road crews for getting the culvert completed in one day. This was extra long day for them and I appreciate them. And there's something that really, really hurt my heart. Um, at my state of the city address, I failed to mention a few of the important city workers, and I was called out on this. And I want to apologize. I did not mean to exclude anyone. But Roger Duncan is our city inspector. He has been the he's been the uh, an employee here longer than anyone else, and. Um, he does all the city inspections, and we greatly appreciate him, as well as Sandy Moore. She works hard in the park, and we appreciate her. Brandon Carmine is our code enforcer, and he has his hands full keeping up with all of the with the city, all of the codes, and all of the citizens that he has to go and deal with. So I appreciate each and every single person and everyone here at, at the city. The fire department, the police department, our city works, streets, everybody. And I do want you to know that I do appreciate each of you. And you guys, I appreciate you as well. And Rhonda, you're amazing. I appreciate you. So thank you guys. And you guys have a great evening. Need a motion to adjourn. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Larry Ardemani. <laughs>